Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So in front of us is the 2023 Volkswagen Tiguan 2.0 SELR line, finished off in a beautiful Atlantic blue metallic. We will also cover the MSRP once we go over all the specs and features and get this SUV out on the road. So let's start off with what powers this Tiguan. This has a two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine. It is paired to an eight speed automatic transmission pumping out 184 horsepower, 221 pound-feet of torque. That is sent through the four-motion all-wheel drive system, propelling this 3,900-pound SUV from zero to 60 in nine seconds with a top speed of 162 miles an hour. Now, as far as fuel economy goes, you're looking right around 21 miles per gallon in the city and 28 out on the highway. Now, as we work our way to the exterior styling for this model, you will notice there are a lot of chrome trim accents Let's start up front where we have the four bar design going through this grill where the middle bar is actually an illuminating LED light strip. So that goes from headlight housing to headlight housing going on both sides of the forward facing sensor. So this is for the adaptive cruise and all of that tech. Very nice to see that incorporated into the logo. There's a forward facing camera just underneath that. But you'll notice too that all the chrome lines up nicely with these headlight housings. So we have that strip underneath to break off to the rest of the grill. Of course, this has LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals as well. And then for the lower section, you will see all these sensors, more chrome and gloss black accents. And I think it gives it a really nice look, especially when you pair it against this blue. Now, as we work our way to the side, this has a set of 20 inch wheels with the two-tone design. You will see another sensor and then some plastic trim for that fender arch. This also has two-tone for the side mirrors with a camera system, the integrated turn signal. You will see a more chrome trim. This even gets a full panoramic sunroof, which is very nice to see. And then as far as the lines go, we have a crisp line at the door height or the door handle height there which gives it a great look. Everything flows nicely with the fender arches all the way to the rear end where this does have a body colored spoiler. You'll notice a third brake light, wiper blade in that lower section. It has a backup camera with all these sensors, LED taillights. It can even tell right around 1500 pounds, which is pretty adequate for this style of vehicle. And before we make our way to the interior, we can remote start this. So let's lock it, double tap this button. It fires right up first try, and then you can shut it off as needed. And then with the power lift gate, we can just use that button or the button to the left of that backup camera. And you'll notice there's a good amount of space. We have a nice flat surface where it can place a lot of items with some cubbies on the driver and on the passenger side to hide away some more items. You can even lift up this floor revealing the spare tire, you can actually place that removable cover straight across if you need that out of the way. There's a few other storage areas there where you can place some more items. And then you can actually fold down the back seats from back here. So if I pull on this lever, it will lock into place. Now I won't do the other side just because it does lock into place like I mentioned, but you can get a feel for the amount of interior storage that this SUV has to offer. Very nice to see that. And then as we work our way to the interior, you'll notice the door panel has a nice design to it with the leather and the stitching. This has the fender audio. We have the window control, some brush trim for that release handle and a nice lining for the cup holder storage space. That way it makes it a little bit more sound deadening, which is nice to see. Now, in order to pop this up, I'll just pull on that tab where it will release. And then we can put that into the backwards position there. There's also a little bit of storage in between the seat and the door, so that is nice to see. And then at five foot 10, I have plenty of space. Now these seats do move forwards and backwards, so if you need a little bit more space behind or a little bit more legroom, you can adjust those as needed. There's storage pockets, air vents, even some auxiliaries, and these seats even recline too, so I can push it back. You'll notice that this one is currently all the way up, and then we have that much room to slide it backwards. Now we have the armrest in the middle along with two cup holders and you can even fold down the middle seat independently. So if you need a little bit more space, very open to the back of this SUV, you have the option to do that. And then you can get a look at visibility as well as this full sunroof. We have the shade or the sunshade closed of course at the moment. 
but very roomy and practical for your back seat passengers. Now the front door panel is just like the rear. We have all the window controls. The side mirrors are power folding and even heated. There's a release for that lift gate and then more of that padding for that storage there. Beautiful leather seats with the piping and the stitching. There's memory seating adjustments and then the rest of the automatic adjustments are on that side. So to fire this Tiguan back up with my foot on the brake, let's bring it to life. And for the virtual cockpit, you will notice on the far left is the engine temperature, on the far right is the fuel level, and currently for the display right in the middle, you can see long term on one side, range until empty on the other, and then right in the middle, you can see the phone. Now using these controls on the right side of the steering wheel, we have all the arrows to further go through that info, along with the heated steering wheel, tuning, and then the voice commands too. So if I use those controls, we can look at miles per hour, or you can also scroll down and decide what you would like to see. So if you wanna keep an eye on your fuel economy, you just let it there for a few seconds, and then it will pop up as the only bit of information for that tab. You can also look at your distance pacing, pull up the compass for the nav, you have the audio to go into, and then back to phone. Now, if you wanna pull up the tack and the miles per hour in a large screen, simply just click on view, and now you'll see it like a traditional gauge cluster setup would be. You can still go through all that information right in the middle, so it's nice that you have the option just depending on what you would like to see. Now, on this left side, all the cruise and adaptive cruise control settings, along with volume for the radio, and we have a beautiful steering wheel with solid and perforated leather, very, very nice design to it with some of those brushed accents. Now on this left side, there is a little bit of storage where you could place some items as needed. We have the headlight adjustments and there's even a little bit of storage space right in the center of the dash. So that's nice to see. Two air vents are just underneath that. And then for the touchscreen system, it's nice to see that these are all buttons within the screen. So they have the haptic feedback to them where you just have to slightly touch them, very similar to a cell phone. And under menu, you can look at all these icons where you can further go through all of this as need to. If you go into car now, you can actually look at some off-road info where we can look at the pitch and the roll as well as the elevation and then you have the engine temperature there. If I go into selection, we can go into the cockpit now where you have a few different views. So if I click on these, it will immediately change the gauge cluster setup here where you can decide what you would like to see which is very nice. We can also go into vehicle status, so you can look at your TPMS and some other vitals, and then we also have the driving data. So that way you can look at your trip one, trip two, miles until you have refueled, and some other info like that. On this left side, you will see shortcuts to radio and media along with phone and voice. This even has navigation. And then power and volume for the radio and tuning are physical buttons that are located right in the middle. Now underneath that, you will see more of the controls that are similar to that screen where we have the heated and the ventilated seats. We also have some defrosters where you'd like the air to go. If you just click on that, it will pop up in the upper screen here where you can further go through this information, which is nice to see. Same goes for the menu icon. So if I click on that, now we can look at driver and passenger. We have the fan speed and a few other controls for that system. Now on both sides, there's a slider bar for the temperature. You can also push on red or blue to adjust that temperature, but it's nice to have that control right in the middle. There's a research too. And then the fan speed is located right in the middle. Again, you can push on either side or just swipe your finger to further adjust that. Now at the very bottom, you will see the wireless charging pad along with some more auxiliaries so that way you can charge additional items as needed. And then looking at the shifter, if I put this into reverse, you will see that backup camera up here with the guidelines, which is nice to see. You can even show the top down view and have that located with it too. And then you can see a few other controls here for the parallel parking. We have another backup assistance there along with the side mirrors or the side camera angles. So it is nice to have that amount of visibility. Now you can also go into drive, put it over into the manual setting so that we can shift using the shifter itself. And then on this left side, you will see the electronic parking brake. On the right side, we have the engine start stop as well as the parallel parking. So you'll see that appear in the gauge cluster when you push on that. And then we also have the parking sensors, which you can turn on and off. Now, right behind the shifter, we have this rotary dial for the different driving modes. 
So this does have a snow mode. You will notice that you can go into eco, normal, sport, or custom. And then you can also go into the off-road setting. There's also a custom off-road setting for this Tiguan. So depending on how you would like to drive that, you can easily do that. Right in the middle, you will see two cup holders, a little bit of storage, and then we have some additional storage in this center armrest, as well as in the glove box too, where you will see some more trim. Very nice touch to see. And then as I mentioned earlier, we have the full panoramic sunroof. In order to control that, we have those buttons up top along with the sunroof adjustments, and then the dome lights are on both sides. We'll take a quick look at visibility from the driver's seat. It is very open feeling and you have a lot of visibility in all directions. So let's go ahead and get the all new Tiguan out on the road. And from second gear, here we go. So a lot more adequate than the third gear acceleration that I did. I don't think I was really going the right speed for third gear, but we're up to speed just like that. So I like the pep that this turbo engine has for this SUV. And now you can get a look at what it's like to be behind the wheel for this $40,000 Volkswagen. I do like the materials that are offered. There is some plastic on the dash, a little bit lesser of materials than you would find in the sister of the Audi. But a lot of vehicles for this price point would have a similar designed to them as far as materials go. But we get leather on the door panels, leather on the seats. I like the material in all of the door panel storage bins there. It's going to make it a little bit less rattling if you have items in there, which I think is nice having that insulation because you will have those probably packed full of items in this type of vehicle. But it's very roomy. I like the space in the back. And there's really not much to downplay with this car. If you're looking for an affordable SUV, but you don't want a long list of technology items, this is perfect. It's a perfect blend with a brand new vehicle for that 40K price point or less, depending on the trim level that you go with. And then the options that you get with the technology. Audio system has been very nice as well. It's just a good interior, very solid feeling. And you're going to get a very reliable and dependable SUV that you can daily drive. But I think that is going to wrap it up for the all new 2023 Volkswagen Tiguan SEL with that R-Line package. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up. Consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. And I will see you all in the next video.